Now let's say like, you're like, okay, I got seven days. I want to work out three. I got three days. I can do strength. I got three other days. I can do something else. And then there's that last day. My recommendation, three to four days of strength, three days of flexibility, cardio and core you're working, not just abs, but actually working your stability. And then one day where you're not working out at all, you may still do your cardio. Like I take my pup out down to the water, but let's say you were looking for three strength days. The best way to just start out to make sure that you're hitting everything is push, pull, and legs, lower body. So these are just a couple different of the seven primal movements that we as humans do. So push is like, imagine if you're pushing yourself away from a wall. If you're doing that action, pushing away, you're going to be working the chest. You're going to be working the delts and you're going to be working the tricep in the back. So there's also some other muscles, serratus anterior for my muscle buffs out there. Uh, but let's just use those first three to, to be for the most part, chest delts and triceps. So when you're building out that workout, you, let's say it's Monday, you want to primarily work the muscles of that movement. So you may do a compound movement, which compound movements are when you're using multiple joints, or you may do an isolated movement, which is where you're working one joint and one muscle. So think about breaking that down. Now, programming gets much more detailed than that, but that's your push day. Pull day is the exact opposite. So that may be on Wednesday. This is where you're pulling something. So imagine, you know, you, you're at the gym and you grab those two handles and you pull towards you. When you're pulling, you're using your lats, you're using your biceps and your posterior deltoids. And for my muscle buffs, you're also using those rhomboids. Now, just think about the first three though. You want to, again, build a workout that works your lats in a compound way and an isolated way, biceps in a compound way and isolated way, and then the post delts in a compound and isolated way. So just off of these two days, you've hit six to eight of your primary muscles of your upper body. Very important when it comes to posture. Now on Friday, maybe your leg day, you've got hinges, lunges, squats, stability type movements. Um, the compound movements, of course, would be the ones I just mentioned. And then the isolated movements are the ones where you sit in a machine and maybe you're, you're extending your legs or curling your legs in or doing the adductor and abductor, open and close. You know, those are your isolated movements. Every workout, I personally recommend you do majority compound lifts, and then you do your isolated lifts to uh, stimulate muscles where there may be an imbalance. Now, just a quick tip on that. Maybe I'll do another video on this. Uh, whenever you're in the machines, that leg extension machine or the leg curl machine, you normally do both legs at one time against that pad, right? I'm going to challenge you to use one leg at a time. The reason being is naturally somewhere in your body, there's an imbalance. We've said that word so many different times. So your right leg might be stronger than your left leg. If you work both of them at the same time in that machine, the stronger leg is always going to do more work. It just always is. It's just natural. The weaker leg is not going to get as much attention because the stronger leg is doing all the work. That also is going to mess with that mind muscle connection. It's called neuromuscular facilitation. Crazy word, big word just means muscle memory. And it really talks about how well is your brain connected to your muscle? How well is your brain telling the muscle to do what it needs to do? If your brain is telling both legs to do something at the same time, but one is stronger than the other, naturally more energy is going to go to that stronger leg. So what don't you do instead one leg at a time? So you can really build that mind muscle connection. Now, if you're, so that's three days. If you're liking to do, if you want to do four days, I always love doing legs twice a week. So I break down my legs, a quadricep day and a hamstring day. Quadricep day is going to be more of your front loaded exercises. So your squats and your lunges, front loaded squats and lunges. And then your uh, posterior day or your hamstring day is going to be much more posterior focused. So like your hamstrings, your calves, your glutes, such like that. You may do some deadlifts. You may do some hip thrusts. There's a ton of stuff, but I like to think front of the lower body, and then back of the lower body. And then each day I work the inside and outside of the legs as well. So just off of that with, and you can rewind and listen to it again, just off of those three to four days, you can literally hit every major muscle in your body. 
and you can really affect your posture in a good way. And then the other three to four days, you're focused on your flexibility. You're focused on your stability, which is huge. I'm definitely going to do a video on stability at one point. Uh, you're focused on your core. You're focused on meals. Honestly, those days might be a good meal prep day. And then, of course, remember that last day, you're taking that day off for reflection.